This special motherfucking sedition live from the streets of resistance in Toronto was made possible by slaves like you. Spank you very much. We have three levels of fences and we're isolating the city like, you know, we're preparing for an armed insurrection. So, and sometimes you, you get what you prepare for. And then you think you were right all along. It's the end of the world as we know it. I feel fine. Go. Good morning, slaves, and welcome to another edition of It's the End of the World as We Know It and I Feel Fine, the show that pushes peeps over the motherfucking fence. <coughs> I am your host, the Stimulator, and speaking of fences, on the first day of the rebellions against the 20 gangsters of the capitalist mob, I decided to take a peep at the five mile long fence that has taken over downtown Toronto. The fence was built to protect poor people from out of town hooligans who plan to burn and loot their neighborhoods. Not the Freedom Fence is actually there to make sure anarchist troublemakers don't spoil a party for the global slave drivers and with a budget of one billion dollars and thousands of pigs patrolling the perimeter, well, one can only see who has the upper hand. Here's Anna from Toronto commenting on the Freedom Fence. That's ridiculous. It's a lot of money. I think the money could have gone to better causes, especially with all the protesters talking about what the uh they need the money for, the money could have gone to them. But the motherfucking resistance does not give a flying fuck about no motherfucking freedom fence and on the first day of the week had a mini gathering to test the waters of the police state. This police state is a massive mistake. We're about to see fascism space. So before it's too late, start smashing the state, break the banks. Don't give the bankers a break. They give orders to the pigs in the streets and give them quotas to meet. Power tripping when they hold in the heat. Big brother's watching and he knows where you sleep. We don't need no pigs and no prisons. We need healthy communities to live in. We don't need systems, no politicians. We act directly to change our condition. Freedom can't be given. You gotta take it and make it your mission to live every day like a vision of escape in the system of enslavement to Richmond. Action is strategy, now wishful thinking. Don't forget the pigs are listening. <laughs> Since uh, media will be there all motherfucking week, we decided to talk to one of the organizers of the anti-G20 convergence to find out what the fucking deal is. We caught up with Syed Hussan to get the skinny. Hey Syed, how the fuck are you? I'm good, how are you? Wait a motherfucking minute, you are not Syed. Sorry about that. So, why are the G20 countries so fucking fucked? As we know that the G20 is particularly focused on impoverishing global communities. They're responsible for bank bailouts, they're responsible for war and occupation. They run 90% of the world armaments, are responsible for most of the armed trade, support the wars across the world, which displace people in impoverished communities. Motherfucking politicians are fucking scared that anarchists are going to come and burn Toronto down to the ground. Can you tell me what kinds of other things people can expect from protesters? Since the mobilization started, I mean, it's called the Toronto Community Mobilization Network versus the G20 shutdown group, right? Our focus has always been on building community power. In particular, we've done that by holding community forums, free barbecues, free lunches and dinners. We've organized dozens of them in the last eight months. We've been going into immigrant communities. We've been going into shelters. We've been going into um, welfare lines, waiting, talking to people. And this is a dual process. We're not just saying, hey, come to the demonstration, we're saying, what are your issues, what are your concerns, how can we actively work to challenge them? That includes a protest, that includes a forum, that includes a direct action at their workplace or at their landlord's house, whichever it is, we're using this moment to build community power. The media keeps focusing on the security of these motherfucking gangsters, but Toronto pigs have been known to kill peeps left and right. What the fuck? Police brutality is an ongoing concern and it's extremely close to the heart of many of our organizers. Um, Every day I hear about friends and families who are being pulled over, uh, people who are harassed and intimidated. Um, I've done workshops in Jane and Finch where the police have just barged in, just walked around and just walked out. And so there's ongoing harassment and intimidation. Um, some neighborhoods in the city uh, have, you know, around the clock um, surveillances. The Toronto police has been involved in 500 deaths in the last five years. Um, they've been, they've tried themselves 31 times and acquitted themselves 31 times. Um, just recently, um, an 18-year-old 
a uh, young man from Jane French was beaten uh, to death. His neck was broken, um, he had severe bruising and contusions, and they said that he had a heart attack. I mean, this is, these, are really, these are lies, these are huge concerns, and the community is mobilizing. We are working to produce a top watch. So the ongoing police brutality is a concern. This is the last time the G8 will meet, and it will morph into a larger criminal syndicate called the G20. What the fucking deal? The G8 should have been replaced the last time it happened. I think the G20, the shift towards G20 is a co-option. Um, it, it tries to put out the idea that now, um, you know, two-thirds of the world's population are represented, and it's absolute nonsense. I mean, what we know is that the G20 leaders collectively have a 30% popularity rate. What we do know is that these, con in, in the poorer nations, the elites rule, and in the rich countries, the elites rule. So this is just a convergence of the interests of the few and the elite. And this is most significantly um, showcased when prior to the G20 meetings in Toronto will be the meetings called the B20. And the B20 is a meeting of chief business executives from these, 20, from these 19 countries plus the EU as well as members of the IMF and WTO that will come together and set for themselves an agenda. And then they will have direct um, interaction with the G20 financial institutions and premiers over the actual weekend. So those are the interests. So whether it was the G8, the G20, or the G198, the interests of most of the people on the planet are not being represented. Thanks, Syed. And that about does it for this edition of It's the End of the World. We know what I you'll find. Big ups to all the peeps who helped get our dream team to Toronto. Edmund, Martin, Sakura, Michael, Rodney, Dan, Birgit, Annie, Paul, and Andy. Stay tuned this week for more updates from the Streets of Resistance on my fucking website, stimulator.tv. Now jump the fence. Remember kids, you can podcast high quality video of this show at submedia.tv. can come and take over your life, take over your city, your environment, when it wants to, and uh, there's nothing you can do about it. You are powerless.